We've seen some insane athletes throughout NBA history, and we continue to every day. But we've also seen some players that have made their way into the league even though they really had no athleticism. There's plenty of guys to name off that might have only played a few minutes in the league, but for the most part, we're going to try to look at some of the greatest, least athletic players of all time. And with that being said, these 10 players might not have been athletic, but they made up for that by having an extremely high basketball IQ to outsmart other players, and by just having more overall skill than their opponents. Because, well, if they didn't, and had no athleticism, they wouldn't have ever made it into the NBA. And of course, everyone has to be a great athlete to make it in the NBA, but we're talking about how athletic these guys are compared to the rest of the league. So, with all that being said, let's get started with an honorable mention, which basically belongs to all the guys that have been great shooters, but that was basically all they could do. Guys like Kyle Korver, JJ Redick, Drazen Petrovic, Sasha Vujicic, Steve Novak, and all the other spot up shooters that made a name for themselves by being below average at basically every other aspect of the game besides shooting. And we're not going to get too far into these guys because not too much needs to be said, but they had to be mentioned. Now on to the real list with number 8, Larry Bird. For Larry Bird to be widely considered as a top 5 player of all time, while having the little amount of athleticism that he did, says a lot about how much skill the man actually had. Because like I said earlier, the less athletic you are, the more skill and basketball IQ you have to have to be great. And I don't remember which one of Bird's teammates said it, but I do remember hearing an interview where they said that whenever Bird would dunk in a game, even off of a fast break, the entire bench would be shocked and go crazy because he barely ever dunked. The man wasn't quick, he wasn't the strongest, but he used his crafty inside moves, his all-time great shooting ability, and his basketball IQ to give him an advantage on offense and defense. That's why even if he played in today's NBA, he'd still be just as dominant. Number 7 Dirk Nowitzki Without a doubt Dirk's a Hall of Famer, and he's earned every bit of that title, but the man runs like a draft. Now I'm not saying that's what makes him unathletic, but it doesn't help his case. And neither does the fact that he doesn't run fast, and he's probably never had a vertical of over 20, maybe 25 inches. I mean, that's one of the main reasons he came up with his one-legged step back in the first place. To get around the fact that he didn't have a go-to way to score on defenders that were bigger and stronger than him. Even though Dirk's getting up there in age now, even back in the day, you could tell just by watching him for a few minutes that he was never the most athletic guy in the room. Number 6, Tim Duncan. There were three reasons Tim Duncan earned the nickname The Big Fundamental. Because he was a smart player, because he played under Greg Popovich, and because he was never the best athlete. He played so fundamentally correct to make up for the fact that he couldn't run nearly as fast or jump nearly as high as all the other power forwards in the league. The man started out as a swimmer in high school and only ever joined the basketball team when the varsity coach recruited him because of his height. And ever since he was a young player in the league, he's basically played the same. He never tried to be something he wasn't or tried to dunk on players when he knew he couldn't. The recurring theme we're starting to see here is that players that weren't the best athletes that still became all-time greats in the league were able to because they played extremely smart and knew their roles on the team. There's plenty of guys in the league that are crazy athletes and just use that to get by, but Duncan proved that it's possible to outsmart the best athletes and become better than some of them ever were. Number 5, Paul Pierce. Paul Pierce might be a future Hall of Famer, but there was nothing athletic about how he played. I mean, he kinda played like an old man. Pierce couldn't ever run fast, he wasn't the most explosive, and one of the only reasons he could dunk was because he was 6'7", but it was because of his all-around skill set that he turned into an all-time great. Paul Pierce was a great post-up, mid-range, and three-point shooter. He knew how to get his teammates involved, and he knew how to use moves to drive past defenders. And then on top of all of that, he was always one of the smartest players because even though he was one of the least athletic, he knew how to dominate on offense and stop the other team's best players when he needed to. Pierce even said that if he was going into the NBA draft today, he feels like he'd go undrafted because of how unathletic he was and how athletic the players are today. But he's got a point because it makes you start to wonder if the athletes of today are overshadowing the young players that actually have skill. Number 4. John Stockton and Steve Nash. Stockton and Nash were two point guards that were often the least athletic guys on the court at all times. 
but they still knew how to dominate. Steve Nash was 6'3", and for the beginning of his career, teams were worried that he was going to be a liability on defense, and while that might have been the case for most of his career, he still turned out to be a two-time MVP. Nash was always one of the players that was in the best shape and took the best care of his body, but even that wasn't enough to give him any advantage athletically. But he did a great job of hiding his weaknesses and utilizing his strengths, of shooting, playing smart, and creating opportunities for his teammates to his advantage to turn him into a Hall of Famer. And a lot of the same goes for John Stockton. Stockton wasn't thought of as a defensive liability like Nash was, but they were both similar styled players. Just like Nash, Stockton was always in great shape and was drafted halfway through the first round because of his size and perceived athletic ability. Number 3, Sean Bradley. Number 3's got to go out to guys like Sean Bradley, George Mirasan, and all the other guys that were in the league for being freakishly tall but had no real athleticism. Bradley and Mirasan were 7'6 and 7'7 and both of them had verticals in the single digits. And they pretty much had zero control of their bodies because they were so uncoordinated. And both of these guys were always the slowest guys on the court, but it didn't even really matter because they couldn't run more than one time up the court without getting exhausted. But you really can't blame them because they were both around 300 pounds in their playing days. And it doesn't take too long after looking up Sean Bradley to find a clip of him getting dunked on because it happened so often. They were both living giants, but had zero athleticism in their giant bodies. Number 2, Manute Bowl. Alright, so it would have made sense to include Bowl in number 3 because he was one of the 7-7 players that could barely run or jump. But we didn't because Bull needs his own number because we're not really sure if he even belongs on this list. Because no one, not even Manute, knows how old he really was in his playing days. He was always billed as being born October 16th, 1962, but his ex-coach has come out and said that he made that date up when he found Bull in Africa. So today there's rumors out there that he might have played in the NBA at the age of 55, which would make him not belong on this list, and would maybe even mean he belonged on a list of most athletic players for being able to play in his 50s. But I don't really believe those rumors because if he was 55 in his playing days, that would have meant he had to have been born around 1935, which means he would have had his son Bol Bol at 64 years old, which isn't very likely. So I'm thinking Manu Bol does belong on this list because he was the average age of any NBA player, maybe a little older, but just extremely athletic like Mirasan and Bradley. Number 1, Zach Randolph. One of the most insane things in the entire NBA in the last 20 years is the fact that Zach Randolph has been able to be as effective and put together the career he has without being fast, explosive, or being able to jump at all. I think it's definitely safe to say Zach Randolph is the least athletic player in NBA history. The man doesn't have an ounce of athleticism in his body, but through being able to play smart and being able to position his body to grab rebounds and score, he's been able to make himself a successful NBA player. I mean, when just dunking the ball gets these kinds of reactions out of your teammates, you know that says a lot. Almost every time Randolph's name comes up on TV, there's someone to point out the fact that he's got an old man's game. And when people are saying that about you when you're 28 years old, you just know something's wrong. A guy like Zach Randolph is never going to make the Sports Center top 10, but he does prove that you don't have to be an extreme athlete to make it in the NBA. And I think that's what we've realized by looking at all of these guys. You still gotta be pretty tall because there's no unathletic short NBA players. But besides that, as long as you got a good knowledge of the game, you always got a chance. So that's gonna wrap up this video. This one took a little longer to get out because I've been messing around with some 2K videos. But definitely comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on wanting to see more of those videos and your feedback on this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.